Hey everyone, it's Carissa Wiley. Thanks for joining me here on the Ellen Hudson In Touch blog. For this month's newsletter, I am inking about color. <laughs> I thought it would be fun to take a look at some of the new inks that are available in the Ellen Hudson store. And here's a quick overview of the inks that we'll be looking at today. We're gonna look at the Distress Oxide inks, more specifically the new colors that are available. Some of the Catherine Pooler inks. We will look at the Brutus Monroe Surface inks and also the Versifying Claire Pigment inks. Now over on the Coordinating In Touch blog post, I'm going over the difference between a pigment and a dye ink briefly, and also how to choose an ink that's right for you. Each of these inks has some unique properties. The Distress Oxides are a dye pigment hybrid. The Catherine Pooler inks are a dye-based ink that are non-permanent. The Versifying Clairs are a pigment ink. And finally, the Brutus Monroe Surface inks are a permanent dye ink. So let's look at the new colors of the Distress Oxide ink. Now these inks are available in a total of 36 colors and I have nine of the brand new colors here. I have the brighter, more colorful colors. Now I do not have the Gathered Twigs, the Aged Mahogany, or the Forest Moss, which was the other three colors that completed this set of 12 inks that were released earlier this year, but I do have Tattered Rose, Carved Pumpkin, Squeezed Lemonade, Bundled Sage, Evergreen Bough, Mermaid Lagoon, Blueprint Sketch, Shaded Lilac, and Hickory Smoke. So we're going to take a closer look at all of these types of inks and their different properties, and we're going to see how they play with water. Distress Oxides, as I mentioned before, are a dye pigment hybrid ink. Now I'm going to open up the ink pad so that you can see the inking surface itself. It is a raised felt ink pad, and that's pretty standard among most ink pads in our industry. You can see the color coming through there nicely. You can almost tell that these are a little bit different than your standard dye-based ink. So these are great for techniques and that sort of thing. They are a fast drying dye pigment hybrid, but they do stay wet long enough for you to blend them and emboss them. Now these ink pads stack up really nicely on top of each other. They do kind of wiggle around a little bit, but they do have enough lip on them to where they will stack up nicely on your shelves. And I'm gonna be doing some stamping today and I am using one of the abstract paint strokes from the Essentials by Ellen line. Now I thought I would stamp each of these different types of inks in both this little paint swoosh kind of thing that has a lot of solid surface with a few little detailed edges. And then I thought I would also stamp them in a sentiment so that you can see how each of these inks stamp. Now I wanna tell you that today's video is not all about telling you to buy this ink or that ink, but rather going over the properties of all of these kinds of inks so that you can make an informed and educated decision for what kind of inks that you wanna bring into your collection. So I stamped each of those and now I'm gonna stamp a couple of images along the side and show you that you can also emboss with these inks. So I'm adding some clear embossing powder over the top of those images that are on the right hand side of my paper and I'm heat setting that. And I am left with a nice clear embossed image. So these types of inks are great if you want to have some different colors of embossing at your fingertips, but you don't wanna have a bunch of different kinds of embossing powder. Now for all of the inks today, I'm gonna be swatching them out as I talk about them. And I'm using this grid here. So I'm gonna keep all of the Distress Oxide inks in the first column, and we'll work across to the Versifying Clear Pigment inks, then the Catherine Pooler and the Brutus Monroe. Now these are specifically designed in a two by two size so that they can be cut down and stored in these coin pocket holders. This is a great way to kind of swatch your inks and know what colors they are. Not all inks look the same when they stamp and dry than they do on the pad. Does that make sense? So as you stamp an ink, especially with dye-based inks, they're gonna dry back a little bit and maybe change colors just slightly. Now Distress Oxide inks are unique in that they dry with kind of like a velvety chalk-like finish. They don't have the same look when they dry as other inks. They are water reactive and when they are exposed to water, they actually create this oxidation effect, which has like kind of this buildup of color with some white, kind of like that white comes to the surface. And I am just stamping out 
the nine of the 12 new colors that I have here so that you can see them all kind of in rainbow order. I think it's beautiful to see inks kind of swatched out like that. As I mentioned, these are just the newest colors and these are not a new ink, but they do coordinate with the existing Distress colors in the line. Now next up, we're gonna look at the Versifying Claire Pigment Inks. These are a pigment ink. Pigment inks act differently in that they stay wet for a little bit longer and they sit on the surface of your paper. Dye inks kind of soak into the fibers of the paper and they dye the fibers of the paper. This is more like what I would call like a paint. It kind of sits on top. It's a little bit thicker. It's a little more opaque when you put it on your fingertip. And you can see I have not all of the colors here, but I have a good assortment. These are available in 24 different colors. Once again, this has a raised felt surface on the stamping or inking surface of the pad. Like I said, that's pretty standard. And these ink pads stack up pretty nicely because the base and the lid are the same size or close to the same size. They um, don't have a lot of wiggle when you stack them up. Now these are a quick drying pigment ink. They are not so quick drying that you cannot emboss with them, but they are going to dry a little bit faster than your standard pigment ink that may be on the market. Some pigment inks that are available on the market have that really thick, opaque texture to them, almost like an acrylic paint in a pad. These are, I don't know how to describe it, they seem a little bit thinner. You can really see the ink sitting on the surface of your stamp, and you can see that when I stamp them, they stamp pretty true to color as to what you see on the pad itself. That's a pretty standard feature of pigment inks. It's kind of one of those what you see is what you get things. Now these Versifying Clairs are made by the same manufacturer as the Versifying Onyx Black pigment ink that we all love so much. So these are gonna give you nice, crisp details and solid coverage. And they're also going to be waterproof just like that Versifying Onyx Black. So if you wanna watercolor over these, you definitely can. These Versifying Claire inks are one of our favorite picks from Creativation this year, and I'm really excited to have them on hand here. I don't have all 24 colors, but the colors I'm showing you today are Tulip Red, Glamorous, Charming Pink, Summertime, Cheerful, Verdant, Green Oasis, Warm Breeze, Paradise, Blue Bell, Fantasia, Purple Delight, Pine Cone, Morning Mist, and Nocturne. Now I got a little out of rainbow order because these last two pads were um, kind of, they escaped the group when I did the opening segment, but I gave them to you in verbal order of rainbow order. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> So now let's take a look at the Catherine Pooler inks. This ink pad is a little bit different from a lot of dye inks that are on the market. It is a dye-based ink. It is a non-permanent dye-based ink. And I do not own all 39 colors, but I have a good range here. And you can see they're actually organized into color collections. There's the spa collection and the party collection. Those collections are there to kind of guide you in your color choices. The party collection, they're going to be really bright, saturated colors. And the spa collection is going to be a little more muted. So if you know you grab two colors from the party collection, they're going to work well together. And two colors from the spa collection are going to work together. Does that mean you can't grab one from party and one from spa and they're not going to work together? Absolutely not. But they are there kind of as a guide for you. Now this Midnight Ink Pad from Catherine Pooler is the only one of the collection that is archival and permanent once it is dry. All of these other colors that you're looking at are water-based and non-permanent. So I'm gonna show you that these ink pads also stack up really nicely. So if you're storing them on a shelf, they work really great. The thing that is unique about the Catherine Pooler inks is the inking surface. It is a foam ink pad. You can see I'm pressing my finger onto this ink pad and there is a ton of give. It's kind of like a really soft, squishy surface. Now on the other ink pads that I show you and on most ink pads on the market, they are this firm felt surface. 
Because of that softer foam surface, which is designed to give you better ink transfer from the pad to the stamp and give you a more solid stamped image, you do have to change up your stamping technique just a tiny bit. You don't want to go smashing your stamp into these because you are going to be left with a mess. That ink pad is going to give way. You're going to have ink all over the side of your stamp, and you only want to ink the surface of your stamp. So you can see here, I'm gently tapping. They call them love taps over at Catherine Pooler. And I'm just gently tapping these a few times on the surface of that foam ink pad and then stamping them onto my paper. And I'm getting beautiful, solid coverage with all of these. Now these inks for a dye-based ink are a slower, drying dye based ink so you can emboss with them which is what i'm going to show you here and i'm not super rushing to get the embossing powder on here i kind of took my time to show you that you can absolutely do that and because they are a slower drying ink they are great for blending onto cardstock as well so here's a look at those stamped out in both the sentiment and the little paint swatches there so here's a look at the colors as I kind of swatch them out for you. I have Polished and then Bellini, Tutti Fruity, Orange Twist, Tiki Torch, Shea Butter, Lime Ricky, Grass Skirt, Green Tea, Meant to Be, Sea Foam, Spruce, Skylight, Aqua Teeny, and then I have Fiesta Blue, Stone Blue, Sugared Lavender, Rose Petals, Flirty Fuchsia, Pixie Dust, Sweet Sixteen, and then I'm going to finish off with that nice juicy black Midnight Ink. So that's an overview of the Catherine Pooler colors. Now the last ink we're going to look at today is the Brutus Monroe Surface Inks. Now these are also a dye-based ink, but they are a permanent dye-based ink. So they're a little bit different than the Catherine Pooler ink. And some of that is gonna make more sense as we explore the inks a little bit more further on in the video. These are a permanent dye-based ink. They are available only in these mini ink cubes. And you can see I have them stored in my Distress Mini Ink Cube 10 and they work beautifully. And I'm gonna stamp a few of these out onto this Nina Solar White. And I'm using the same cardstock throughout the video for all of these inks so that they get a really nice side-by-side um, -side comparison. And also I will have photos of all of these little swatches over at the InTouch blog post, so be sure to check that out. Now these surface inks are a permanent dye-based ink. So when I talked to Christopher Allen and he was talking to me about how he designed these inks, he actually told me that he wanted an ink that would be permanent on different types of surfaces, not just paper. So these are great for stamping on other types of surfaces like glass and ceramic and fabric. He does recommend that you heat set them, but they have more than just that kind of um, stamping on paper purpose for them. Now, even though they're permanent, he told me it was important for him to have them be kind of watercolorable. I don't know. <laughs> you can use them to watercolor. And while he doesn't claim that you can emboss with them, at least he doesn't that I know of, I was able to add some embossing powder along the top of these and emboss with them. Now, obviously, some inks are going to be better for embossing. Some are going to give you a little more time. I did not, once again, rush to get the embossing powder on here, and I was able to emboss with them just fine. Now, the colors I'm looking at today, there's 29 colors total available. I have Marsala, Stargazer, Honeysuckle, Apricot, Zest, Envy, Cabbage, Speckled Egg, Sea, and Oz. And you can see it actually takes me a little more time to ink up each of these stamps because I have to place the stamp down and then turn it over to ink it up with the mini ink cubes. But mini ink cubes are a great way to save space and money. So if you're tight on space, they are great for storing in small areas. And some of the other inks available on the market are available in the mini ink cubes as well. The other inks that I showed you today are not at this time available in mini ink cubes. So here's a look at all of the inks swatched out. I have them in columns. So the first column is Oxide. The second is the Versafine. The third is Catherine Pooler. The fourth is Brutus Monroe. And you... 
I mean, seriously, how can you not love that rainbow of color? <laughs> So as I mentioned earlier, some of these inks are permanent and some of them are water reactive. So I thought it would be good to show you what happens when you expose all of these inks to water. Now the Brutus Monroe and the Versafine, those are permanent inks. So it's no surprise to me that when you expose them to water, nothing happens. However, the Distress Oxide and the Catherine Pooler inks are a non-permanent water reactive ink. So when you expose them to water, they begin to move around a little bit, which tells me that you're also going to be able to watercolor with them. Now, in order to put a little more water down than just that little aqua brush that I had there, I took my little Nouveau sprayer here and sprayed these inks. And you can see that the permanent inks are not moving, but those other inks are kind of working their way out almost instantaneously. That is that water reactive property. So keep in mind that if you're going to do something wet on top of those types of ink, you're going to get a little bit of bleed. Now, you may be looking for that. There are some techniques where you want that to happen, and there are some techniques where you don't want that to happen. So like I said, this is just an exploration of how these inks stamp and behave. And I'm going to go ahead and spray all of these inks and set them aside to dry. And like I said, the non-permanent inks, you can see them moving immediately, but the permanent inks are staying in place. I will have a picture of all of these once they've been exposed to water and dried on their own over at the InTouch blog, but here's a kind of look at these before they're even dry, what's happening with those inks. Now, earlier I talked to you about the oxidation effect, and you can really see it on those colors in the lower left-hand corner. I'm showing you here that the Versafine are remaining um, permanent there. But look at this lower left hand side. You can really see that oxidation effect happening on those Distress Oxide inks there on that side. And you can just see the movement of the Catherine Pooler inks with the water there in that third column as well. The other two are remaining permanent just like we expected them to. Now for the next experiment, I wanted to actually try watercoloring with these inks. Now I had in mind what I thought was gonna happen and they pretty much behaved like I thought they would, but I took a blue colored ink pad from each of these different types of ink and I smushed them onto a craft mat here. Now I'm gonna keep all of these in the same order, oxide, Versafine Claire, Catherine Pooler, and then the Brutus Monroe. But this time I'm working on some Ranger watercolor cardstock. And you can see I'm just smushing all of these on there. Now I did not expect to be able to watercolor with the Versafine Claire pigment ink. I just wanna make that clear ahead of time. And it didn't work. It's a permanent pigment ink. I didn't expect to be able to. But as I hold up my craft mat here, you can almost tell which colors you're gonna be able to watercolor with because they're beading up on the surface of that craft sheet there. You can see the Distress Oxide and that Catherine Pooler are kind of beading up and you would expect them to react with water. I'm gonna go ahead and just spray a little bit of water onto each of these colors. And then I'm going to take my water brush here. I'm not actually using the water from the water brush itself, but I am just using it to paint with today. And I'm going to paint each of these kind of in a swoosh. Now I'm really cleaning off my paintbrush between each one. You can see I was able to transfer a little bit of ink on the Versafine Clear, but not much at all. The Catherine Pooler, they give you that true kind of watercolor vibe in that they are very transparent. You can see on the oxides there, because they have that pigment property, they're a little more opaque when you watercolor with them. Can you watercolor with them? Absolutely. They are moving with water, they're working just fine, but they give you a little more opaque finish instead of that kind of translucent finish that you normally would expect most watercolors. Now the Brutus Monroe were interesting to me because you could watercolor with them and they almost had a granulation effect to them very much similar to some of the Daniel Smith watercolors. Now I'm going to add a little bit of water to the cardstock itself and then just pick up a little bit of that color and touch it to that kind of drop of water. And I wanted you to just be able to see how the colors moved when you did a kind of wet on wet technique. So they do move really well, the ones that you are able to watercolor with. And you can see the various results that you get with the different types of ink here.
So once again, that oxide leaves you with a more kind of opaque finish. And the Catherine Pooler and the Brutus Monroe give you that more translucent finish. Now, the Versify Nocturne and the Catherine Pooler Midnight Inks are both permanent. However, the Catherine Pooler ink is also Copic friendly. I'm stamping each of these black inks onto Nina Solar White cardstock so that you can get a feel for how they stamp kind of these detail images as well as the solid images. And then I'm going to attempt to Copic color with both of these. Now both of these inks are permanent once they're dry. So you can watercolor with these or you can use other water-based mediums and you're not gonna have to worry about bleed out. The Midnight Ink Pad is the only one from the Catherine Pooler collection at this time that is archival and permanent. So keep that in mind. This is the only one that you can do this with. I'm stamping them in both kind of a detail image as well as a sentiment and a solid image. And then I'm going to heat them with a heat tool to make sure that they're really good and dry because I want to give them a fair shake at this Copic marker test that I'm about ready to do. So once both of these are dry, I'm gonna take a light colored Copic marker and I'm gonna color right over the surface of that, of that leaf image on one side. The first one I did was the Catherine Pooler. The next one is the Versifying Nocturne ink. And you can actually see here that the Catherine Pooler ink stayed in place and the Versifying, you can kind of see the bleed out. It almost came out in those little stripes just like that were on the leaf itself, but it did bleed out a little bit. So the Catherine Pooler Midnight Ink Pad is not only permanent and waterproof, but it's also Copic friendly as well. So there you have it, a look at all of the brand new inks that are available in the Ellen Hudson shop. And I have summarized the properties of each of these different types of ink over on the Coordinating In Touch blog post. So if you wanna have it kind of bullet pointed out for you, kind of condensed all in one place, be sure to head on over to the Coordinating In Touch blog post because there you'll find more still shots, more information, that nice concise summary of each of these inks, as well as links to all of these products in the Ellen Hudson store. And just for fun, I just wanted to throw in a couple more shots of these beautiful swatched rainbows, some of them with the water exposed to them and some of them just kind of swatched out because who doesn't love a little bit of rainbow eye candy, am I right? <laughs> As always, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments below. All of these products are available for purchase at ellenhudson.com. Thanks for watching. Thanks for stopping by. And until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe by clicking that button on the left-hand side of the screen. And here's a couple more video tutorials I thought you might enjoy.